in the book of Esther, we saw that uh, the king had summoned Vashti to come and be paraded around his drunken friends. Uh, she wasn't willing to be humiliated or uh, lusted upon by a whole country of drunken men, so refused. The king and his advisors had to remove from her position as queen. In time, the king became lonely and wanted a wife. So his advisors recommended having a beauty pageant to find a pretty young bride. And so he did. And in Esther chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, we read that when the king's order and edict had been proclaimed, many young women were brought to the citadel of Susa, put under the care of Haggai. Esther was also taken to the king's palace and entrusted to Haggai, who had charge of the harem. She, Esther, pleased him and won his favor. Immediately, he provided her with beauty treatments and special food. He assigned to her seven female attendants selected from the king's palace and moved her and her attendants into the best place in the harem. She received favor from the leader there. And I want to speak to you about gaining favor. It is important sometimes the difference between life and death. Well, uh, it says there she received his favor and got the best place in all the harem. Other translations say Esther was his favorite. He was very impressed with her and did his best to make her happy. Uh, Haggai liked Esther and took special interest in her. The word favor in the thesaurus, approval, support, kindness, and preference. This is what favor is all about, uh, bringing pleasure to those in power, authority, uh, receiving the best of something, being the favorite, impressing others, people seeking to make you happy, people taking uh, great special interest in you. You winning approval, support, kindness, and preference over other people. Esther won the favor of Haggai. And then after getting married, there was a day in which she needed her husband's, the king's favor as well. Uh, so what happened is in Esther 4.11, it tells us that all the king's servants and the people of the king's providences know that for any man or woman who comes into the king in the inner courtyard who is not summoned, the king has only one law, to put that person to death, unless the king holds out to him the golden scepter, as we see here on the screen, then the person will live. And Esther tells Mordecai, her cousin, I've not been summoned to the king in 30 days, a whole month. Mordecai said, Esther, listen, you need to go speak with your husband, the king, because, uh, you know, uh, trouble's coming. And Esther said, listen, Mordecai, I'd love to do it, but uh, my husband hasn't asked to see me in a whole month. And I can't just walk in because if I walk into his presence in the courtyard and, he, courtyard and he's not interested in me being there, that's it. Death. I die right then, right there. I can't do it. But Esther realized this was important. Her life and the life of her people, Israel, was at stake. It needed to happen. So she had Mordecai gather the Jewish people for fasting, call them to a fast along with her. And then she will go in after they fast together as a nation, put her hands in the trust of God and put her hands in her life in God's hands in his fate and trust in him. And she did. She went before the king. And as we see in the picture, the scepter was extended. Favor was granted. She was not summoned to die. She was granted life. And God granted them the prayer and protected her and the people, <coughs> excuse me, of Israel. Sometimes extending the scepter favor means the difference between life and death. 
Well, I imagine in countries where there is still a king, uh, there is still possibly the extending of the scepter to allow people or deny people the right to enter or stand before the king. In America, the president doesn't have a scepter. He has bodyguards instead uh, to grant favor or not. We don't have the scepter, but we do have one other thing, though, as well, a VIP pass. huh? VIP pass, you go to a concert, a special banquet, a, uh, an opera, a special event, and then backstage or in a private area, it is not open for public admittance for people to freely walk in. Uh, but people who receive a VIP pass, they are granted privilege. They are granted preference and approval. They receive special interest and they're favorites of those in charge and they are allowed access into place where others are not allowed. And so a VIP pass you may be more familiar with than the scepter and that's what Esther got. She got the VIP pass that day and was allowed to not only enter the king, her husband's presence, but continue to live. Well, she's not the only one in history that received favor or VIP pass in Acts 7, 9 and 10. Uh, the writer tells us that the patriarchs were jealous of Joseph uh, and they sold him as a slave in Egypt, but God was with Joseph, rescued him from all his troubles. He gave Joseph wisdom and enabled him to gain the goodwill or the favor of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And so Pharaoh made Joseph ruler over Egypt and all his palace. God granted Joseph favor, and therefore the favor of God brought the favor of man, and he became ruler over all of Egypt on behalf of Pharaoh and the leader of the palace, the White House of the day and the country. Listen, there are moments every one of us need favor. Stuff happens, hopefully not the difference between life and death, uh, but all of us will experience opportunities where we need the favor of God and we need the favor of God to bring us the favor of man, of people, so that either we continue to live or get things that we need. So what does the Bible tell us about how to gain God's favor? Just a few scriptures to whet your appetite and share a little bit of things that are necessary. Psalm 5 verse 12, surely David says, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. God will bless people. Show us favor when we live right in the eyes of God. If you want to have God's favor, one thing that will help you gain God's favor is live right in the eyes of God. Two, Matthew 6, 31 and 33, Yeshua says, don't worry, you know, saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? Or what will we wear? The pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. The favor will be there for you to get that as well. Paraphrase says, and God will give those things to you if you give him first place in your life and live as he wants you to live. You need favor from God. One of the things Yeshua teaches is that when you seek God first before anything or anyone else, give God first place in your life. Seek to live your life the way God wants you to, God will then grant you favor so that you get the things that you need, need in life. One other scripture, Proverbs 3, verses 1 to 4, Solomon says, My son, do not forget my teaching and my commands in your heart. They will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Solomon says, live a life of obedience, love and faithfulness. Obedience, love and faithfulness. 
when you do this, God will bless you. He will show you favor, grant you longer life, peace, prosperity, and a good name, which is also a reputation, a good reputation with God and man. Listen, every one of us have moments all throughout our lives. We need the favor of God and man. We need a good name to go before us, to gain us access to, grant us life or provision instead of death or lack. And here are a few scriptures that uh, teach us some things that we can do to help us bring pleasure to God, to make God happy with us, to gain God's favor, approval, support, kindness and preference to be one of God's children, one of his favorites. Uh, if you have a moment in your life now and you need some favor, I invite you to write me. I will include a link so that you can uh, go to a form, be directed to a form and share with me a briefly of your need so that I could pray that you would gain the favor of God and man. Uh, if you need that, fill out that, uh, click on that link and I will gladly pray for you to gain favor. And so I want to be a blessing and a help to you because you will have moments. And if you're struggling right now and need that, please write me so that I could be of service and pray for you to gain the favor of God and man. It's been great spending time with you. I look forward to hearing from you and praying for you. Shalom.